And here we are. Hi, everyone. I'm <laughs> Dane Dormio. Welcome to the Chai Tea Tai Chi web show. I'm Dane Dormio. I'm joined this evening by my good buddy, Andrew Brown. And <clears throat> we have a very special and unique guest this evening. I'm really glad to be having this conversation and sharing this conversation with everyone, with Stephen Watson, who is a non-teacher of Tai Chi and Taoist arts, and he's been not doing that for 30 years, in fact. He uh, <laughs> also travels the world not teaching Tai Chi, Qigong, self-defense, Eastern philosophy and healing, breathwork, and meditation at various workshops and seminars, or perhaps I should say non-workshops and non-seminars. <laughs> and he also doesn't there, teach I call, them, I call them play shops. <laughs> yes, which is, uh, and, and get this, he lives on a farm. It's called the Someday Farm. He, uh, what would a farm be without animals? Of course, there are many animals there since he prefers their company to most humans. Although you are welcome to visit and be his next teacher since he learns from everyone he meets. So, Stephen, thank you for being here. And I'm looking forward to to uh, hearing about your interesting philosophy and starting with <laughs> your your background, your origin story. How did you get into all this stuff? Well, that's a really tough question to ask when we have a whole hour in front of us because I could just answer that question. It's better to <laughs> answer that. Say, I'm, I'm on my way up the door. Quickly answer. Uh, <laughs> um, the way uh, that I like to tell it, is that um, when we are young, we ask our parents, um, why is the sky blue or whatever? You know, why do we put the salt in that, you know, cabinet? You know, why anything? And the parent says, well, why? the sky is blue because there's no clouds. And then the kid says, why are there no clouds? Well, it has to do with uh, evaporation and sometimes they form some why does it have to do with evaporation? Well, you see elements shift phases. And when you're interested, you can see that the heat allows it to shift phase and then the air brings it and the warm air. Well, why? Okay, it's physics 101 now, kid. You're only four years old. I can't believe I'm doing this. So they tell the kid that answer. The kid's like, oh, why? And so my realization was that there's no end to why. And of course, you could tr purposely be annoying and just say why for the fun of that, for sure. But I was actually just earnest. Like, why? Whatever you're telling me, I'm with you. But why? What's the next question? And eventually, parents uh, will say, because I say so, shut up and eat your dinner. Or because God made it that way. they are all versions of shut up. That's the end of my rope, the end of my knowledge, the end of my energy and attention. But that's not an answer. It, it's, it's just a construct that, hey, you've asked your questions. I'm trying to watch Seinfeld. Yeah. So yeah. you're done. <clears throat> In other words, it's deeply unsatisfying to reach an end to the question of why. Then I found philosophy, which doesn't suggest we're going to end. <laughs> Like, this is the idea. We're not, it's not math. We're not going to solve this one, but we're going to exercise it. And it could be earnest and it could be playful and it could be argumentative. And you could do a U turn in your thinking and new data and another insight. So, anyway, I said, Well, how do I learn this stuff? Well, there's this philosophy, that religion, this philosophy, that religion. So, I'm just, I'm actually in my library here. I'm reading and badgering everybody. <laughs> why, why, why? What else? What else? Where did this come from? It's the etymology. How does that connect to this other thing? And eventually you get to the end of somebody's knowledge or interest in uh, engaging with you, or perhaps just ability to explain, and that's fine. Um, and I explored an awful lot of uh, philosophies and religions. And uh, the religion all got to a point where here's the answer, which is really just we're done with the dialogue. Um, 
so I kind of rejected all that. And then I'm left with philosophy and eventually kind of shot it all down or some part of this was interesting. And when I found Taoism, my first thought really was sort of, I guess, anger or um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I felt I felt like um, like somebody had stolen my idea that I hadn't yet concretized and written down. And I was like, who, how do they know the right way? I mean, the way that I felt, like, how is it? And I kind of realized a bunch of different things that I'd felt or thought or bubbling beneath the surface. And indeed, right in this place and that place, we're all kind of expressed in Taoism. So I was- I know, I know exactly that feeling of, the, exactly yeah. that feeling you're talking about. Of how did this old guy who lived 2,500 years ago read my mind? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so then I'm immediately like, let me buy the fancy hat and, and, and go to the place to read those books. Like, there's obviously going to be a hat for you. Know, right? And then there's going to be That's a place true. to read books. Right. And and uh, they didn't really offer any hats. Right. Um, and moreover, my um, sort of apprehension of it, not apprehension with, but the app, my, my grasp of it was that the place to learn is, is in nature. It's not really books. It's not an ivory tower thing. All the ivory tower can take you places, for, you know, for, including about Taoism. But the place is get your feet in the mud and to stand in the rain and to stare at a tree and to eat berries that are sour and to watch the frog leap, et cetera. Um, and I said, well, is, is there some sort of methodology for doing this rather than just me sitting in a mud puddle, which is fine. Like if that's the answer, I'll do that. That's a great life. Uh, and somebody, I don't even remember who, but it was like, you sound like you're talking about Tai Chi Chuan. Although they, they probably said Tai Chi. Um, and I said, I'm in, sign me up, let me do it. And so the answer to your question, how did I start doing all this was that I never stopped saying why the little three-year-old pulling on dad's pant leg. Um, I'm still doing that. So you're a and, curious uh, cat. My, my slogan. Yeah. My slogan is that when you, you know what the plural of the word why is, don't think, just say it. Wise. Right. Wise. So when you have enough whys, you have yeah, whys. So I'm on my way. Let me, let's do this. Um, and so that's been the process. Yes. When you have enough whys, you become wise. That's, that's <laughs> great. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's my slogan. <laughs> <laughs> or at least you sound wise to, uh, to younger folks. <laughs> <laughs> right. And at this point, so, I'll take it. That's fine. <laughs> so, Stephen, what was the uh, central idea of Taoism that really, like, sparked you and said, oh, this is a lot closer than all the other philosophies I've read about so far? <clears throat> well, I, I would probably say, you know, the name that can be named is not the eternal name. <laughs> right? <laughs> like right there in the beginning you know we have we have a poet or a writer or a sage or a scholar or whatever um some smart dude um who says look the whole words thing is not gonna work right mm -hmm. we, we can't express what we're trying to express the ineffable with the effable words and i use that term purposefully the effable <laughs> words do not reach the ineffable, right? Now, so he stated that in the first stanza. But mm -hmm. what does he do? Well, he gives us 80 more chapters, right? It's like Why a disclaimer. Why does he give us 80 more it's chapters? It's total honesty. It's like right. a disclaimer. Well, Warning, I'm about to right. attempt to put into words something that cannot be put into words. So there right. you go. Bear Which, with me. I'm doing me, my best. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> It's, right. To me, it's beautiful because if you ask a poet, you know, how is it going with that expressing love thing? The poet is going to be like, dude, it can't be done. Like love is just outside the bounds of words. So what do you plan to do with your life? Well, I'm going to write love poetry because I'm a poet. What else am I going to do? I might recognize that it's 
the wrong tools, but it's the best tools that I have. And moreover, it is who I am. And so I'm going to try. And that trying is beautiful, right? Trying in the face of foregone failure, if you will, mm -hmm. right? As if it's binary. Like if you can't express it, you've expressed nothing. But that, that idea of, you know, the Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. By the way, please scroll ahead to the next chapters. That's, you know, um, exquisite, you know. Yeah. It's very humble. <clears throat> among yeah. Other things. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, One of the things yeah. that I love about the Tao Te Ching was the idea of the master. Like, there's the master person, and then there's the non-master. And then you go about trying to emulate the best possible person you can imagine. And that's what you try to become. Yeah. That's what I love about Yes. Yeah, which, which is great. And you can look at it fractally, right? Is it a story mm. about you, the being? Is it a story about the family unit? And is it a story mm. about a nation? Or, you know, uh, a province or, a, you know, whatever the larger scope is? And the same lesson that you begin to um, uh, access will then apply at other uh, scales, which is great because if, for example, Andrew accesses it on a personal level and my personal life is a mess, but I have my family figured out, right? But Dane accesses it as a town council member, right? We can all take the... Um, what we've um, integrated at the scale that we've grasped it and begin to see the same lessons um, elsewhere in our lives, right? So it's mm -hmm. really, it's beautiful because it's not saying you have to do here. If I can do it better here, great. And if, if it works here or for whatever reason, that's where I find myself making sense of it. Do your sense making there, but understand that that lesson is fractal smaller or bigger right um it's yeah always another circle yeah <laughs> yeah so and that's is, essentially the way that i teach yeah please mm -hmm. where, where i was actually just going to ask i think kind of we we're going in the same direction i was going to ask where where does martial where did martial arts come into all this yeah <laughs> Or did you, um, like, did you for discover me, Taoism first and then, and then you discovered internal martial arts? Or were you into internal martial arts? That was how you got into Taoism? Or how, yeah, how was it? No, it was Taoism. It was Taoism first. I was probably eight or nine or ten or something like that. Um, uh, <laughs> and th then it was uh, massage, which is a very brief kind of introduction. But it, you know, massage is essentially push hands again at this lo smaller mm -hmm. scale, right? You know, like the one uh, addressing the less than one, right? The, the, uh, the like the muscle group, for example, uh, and then that became Tai Chi Chuan. Uh, and the way that I learned it was, we need to understand application. You know, uh, whereas you know, some people will look at Tai Chi and just um you know it's silk and it's flowing and this used to be a punch but now we're just handing the tea and so there's another way to do it but the way that i um found it was we need to make this work we need to make this functional so everything was tested you had to understand it and be able to express it that way uh and then you know it doesn't hurt that you know are I'm you still saying a young that, man, that you really uh, smashing things what? like i'm in are you, are you saying that you learned in a way that uh, that integrated the martial aspects uh, very closely so it, uh, uh, it wasn't just um, uh, it wasn't just surface level but but uh, or, or, or like just the, the kind of healing arts but it, it incorporated the the martial aspects in a deep Cor way correct yeah right so yeah, so it was it was martial from the beginning, and um, and then I guess the healing aspect of that was the other side of the same coin. So we were always learning both, although the early emphasis was martial. Um, and and interestingly, my first Tai Chi Chuan teacher, 
you know, he, he, he didn't use the word philosophy. He didn't ever use the word Taoist or Taoism. Um, he wasn't coming at it from that place. And yet the lessons could be learned, right? Uh, so when I mentioned like the frog or the mud puddle or the peach tree, those things aren't busy teaching Taoism or saying philosophy. They're just being in a pure and sincere way, a natural way, the Zhi Dan, right? And my teacher I found to be a great Taoist teacher, but he would never, he said, I teach people how to smash people. They're, you know, this, these are the things that we do. You know, and and yeah. I, I'd just be in the corner, like nodding my head, like, good one. That's like chapter seven. That is, wow. <laughs> and he's like, don't say that. Just do more push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would tell people that my only job as a teacher really is to shortcut where it, they may find it um, urgent or necessary, their practice. You know, if you just want to sit under the tree at sunrise every day, you're going to figure out everything there is to figure out. By the way, it's likely mm -hmm. to take many, many years, and you'll probably be bored because I teach Americans. Um, <laughs> so if you want to shortcut that a little bit, I'll show you a few Qigong things and, and talk about some breathing. And, I, and I'll show you a bunch of things. I used to do this. This I thought was right for 10 years and then I figured this out. And then I, I saw this interview by somebody and I read this. So maybe just start here instead of the 15 years of mistakes I made. So really, that's kind of my job is just to, where I can help people find a shortcut. And I don't mean like selling magic, like study with me for two days and I'll teach you how to you know, levitate. I don't mean shortcuts like that, but just um, uh, illuminate the, the the marked path that I've trod. Uh, and those marks are saying danger this way. That's a dead end. Don't bother with that. Here's an easier way or a sensible way. Um, yeah. So I think that that's a big part of it too. That's that's really interesting to me right now, particularly because I was just I was just thinking uh, recently uh on my own about kind of the role of the teacher and how there, there's certain ways and way, like certain things you can kind of shortcut or speed up the process but like well i let me uh back up a bit like you uh as in in the process of becoming a teacher first you you uh are are a beginner and you and you go through your learning process you go through a learning process and uh and at some point you um begin to teach and um and i was just thinking about how much of the role then of teaching is to kind of bring someone through the process the same way you went through it like you know mm -hmm. kind of you know versus how much is the role to to speed up or optimize or um uh you know uh, uh bring them bring them along further and faster than you were able to go in, well, in your own learning process if we so think that, about it, yeah if if we think about the path that somebody has taken and, and as i've described it it's full of uh errors right in missteps maybe if i point those out to somebody um it isn't for the purpose of speeding up their journey it's for the purpose of making their journey um safer perhaps more efficient uh, perhaps like in the sense of time wastefulness or attention wastefulness but it, it would be um, presumptuous or arrogant to think that all the mistakes i made are the only ones. so if i help you avoid those you won't have your own mistake to make and therefore make it take a long lifetime just as it did for me so yeah. to me yeah. it's, it's really just about pointing out uh, I thought it was that, but then somebody corrected me early on or not early on. So let me share that with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, there's plenty of mistakes for everybody to make. I mean, you've been to a teaching <laughs> class. There's a lot of mistakes, right? Well, a couple of my students said today they just completed the form, the short form, their first form. And I think it was three years of doing the short form. And they just completed it like two weeks ago. And they were saying today we were practicing and, and she said, uh, this is great because we have the whole form. I have a whole lot more room to make all these mistakes. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. I have all the room now to make all the mistakes. <laughs> now you touched on a great point. Oh, uh, I think the student, and well, the, at, in the learning process, you make tons of mistakes. And because of the mistake, you find the solution. You actually have to search for the solution. And it, you know, as the student without your teacher having 100% access to your teacher all the time, sometimes you have to go find the solution somewhere else. Go read books, listen to videos. Sure. Uh, and sure. that process is basically the process of how to learn. And if you don't, if the student doesn't learn how to learn while they're learning from you, then you have failed them as a teacher, in my opinion. Because you need to let them be able to figure this out on their own without you. Because you can only be there for, what, 10% of the time? Maybe an hour a week? If right, that. Right. Sometimes you get right, right. lucky and you do it every day. But that's rare. <laughs> well, ultimately, what I do in my classes, I, I teach my students. Um, let, let's say, for example, Andrew, you came to class. And it's your first class. And something comes up and I teach it to you. right? So you've had that lesson. And the next week, you come back, but Dane is also there for his first class. I will almost definitely say, hey, Andrew, teach Dane what you learned last week. Wow. And then I will explain to Dane why I'm doing that. And there's a couple of reasons. One, um, if, if I have to teach that basic lesson one more time, it's going to be the end of me. I've done it 48 bi billion times. So... It's really nice to say, hey, Andrew, go show that to Dane, right? Now, that's a little bit fun, but there's some truth to it, right? Like, I, I taught the basics, whatever you're going to learn the first day, billions of times. And at some point, perhaps, it becomes a job. And jobs are things that people quit. And I'm interested in a lifestyle, not a job. So trying to defend that where I can, I find very helpful. But the big reason is that Andrew, in his very second class, is teaching Dane something. And Dane is going to get, let's say, 50% of it because you forgot some and you got some stuff wrong or, you know, that's fine. So Dane has 50%, right, in his first class. That's pretty good. Like, you got half of that lesson. At that point, I come over and I fill in the blanks so that Andrew learns what he thought he knew but didn't prove out to have remembered or knew how to express, but he remembered. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the lesson, Dane has 100%. Andrew's got practice teaching and doing and also an insight into what he thought he knew, but then when he had to explain it, it's much harder. Or when he got a question, he's thrown for a loop. And then for me, the particular 50% that I have to give Dane is different every week, right? So what I'm actually teaching is different. I'm looking for the puzzle pieces and saying, what can make 100%? So I'm much more engaged and interested in this boring first week lesson, right? So everybody goes away with 100%. My job is much more interesting and creative. And then the emphasis for both of you is understood to be through teaching, we learn. And what I'm interested in doing is teaching people how to teach because it's been my experience that's your best way to learn. So the, the reason I said all that is that's kind of related to what you were saying is I want to teach people how to learn. I don't know that I can. I'm happy to help pedagogically where I can see some support for it. Um, but I can tell them how I've seen people fail to learn right, in their disciplines and application of their cells and attention and awareness, like that's, again, pointing out the path and the missteps. I don't know that I can teach them how to learn, but I'm yeah. also in this business where people come to me wanting to spend their free time and free money learning something. I'm not a sixth teacher who all the kids have to be in my class. Some of them don't want to be and some of them do. Everybody that comes to me wants to be there. And maybe that's part of how you learn that that sort of enthusiastic engagement. And I don't have to uh, contrive that I kind of benefit by it being there. Um, so where I can I, I'll help shape the the um, the skill of learning, but I don't know how it varies. Uh, 
in a custom way for everybody. So I can speak to it. I can share my experience. I can be empathetic and connected to students and just be a good person. I get like help. Um, but I do know that I can teach and I can teach how to teach. And that is the learning. If that, if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. No, I like what you said about having the student. It shifts, teach. It shifts somebody's. Love that because it, it uh, shifts I think somebody's um, focus to outside themselves when they're mm -hmm. teaching. You know, so it helps to develop empathy and listening skills that we're going to want in Tai Chi Chuan. I, I apologize. I talked to over you because we have a lag. No, I didn't know you were starting. Let's yeah, start from no, the beginning. Hi, I'm uh, Steve Watson. I'm Dave Farm. I'm with your point about making the student teach as soon as possible because regurgitating the information you think you know shows you what you actually know. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, yeah. Uh, Richard Feynman, uh, one of my heroes, he, he mentioned this a lot. He said, uh, learn something, go read it, research it, and then start writing it down separate yes. and trying to explain it to yourself. See, see how much is there. Each of the same one. And then by the time you've taught it to someone properly, then you understand it. But if you don't teach to someone, yes. you don't really get it because you can't explain it. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, so yeah, the, if the it applies to math. <laughs> the lag is, is funny because it makes it hard for us to uh, <laughs> tell when the pauses are. But that's 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 totally. You should with... interview Zen. You should interview Zen teachers because there'd be no lag that we'd notice. We'd have to be silent. Just. <laughs> I, 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 thought, I thought we were all supposed to be Taoist Tai Chi masters here. What, should, what, I guess yeah. we need to get our game our <laughs> game together. <laughs> but that's exactly my approach to teaching too. Is is to um, get the. The, the, to, to uh, involve the students in teaching as early as possible and learning this learning mm -hmm. is learning how to teach. Um, and I, I, I like the image of a, 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 a fire line or a bucket, a, a bucket brigade, you know, where everybody's yep. like handing down the buckets as, yeah. as the way knowledge is passed, passed, passed on is so, um, that's uh we're we're definitely on the same wavelengths as far as i'm <clears throat> and you know it, it raises an interesting question for me uh which is it's it's um was uh it's it seems to kind of go against the grain of a lot of tradition uh where you have to study under a certified master for so long and then your and then your master gives you permission to teach mm -hmm. you know and and and, and uh, at a certain point and and eventually you become certified in that and 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 we're teaching uh to you know too early or giving away the secrets of the style whatever right uh, could be well, seen my, my teacher would say that uh if, if you ask me to begin teaching i know you're not ready right <laughs> and this thing would go for like a rank promotion or something if you ask me if you're going to test for your rank you're not ready <laughs> like, and he would say mm -hmm. uh uh so, so i asked him i said um well how do you know um if they're ready to teach after you ask them and he says if i ask them to teach and they say thank you okay they're not ready to teach if they say oh my god i'm not ready to teach you're ready to teach. <laughs> like, go for it. <laughs> yeah, the Which I thought was, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty insightful, right? That, like, that don't go forward arrogantly, please. <laughs> mm, I like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah, he he would say that's your most important thing is just I don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. Repeat after me, I don't know. That's very, and then the rest of the sentence is, but let's, let's play at it. Let's see what we can figure out. Let's experiment. You know, I think a great word for like a, like a dojo or a coon or, you know, a studio or whatever you call your school would be sandbox. You know, I think that would yeah. be just like, like a, it would tell you everything you need to know. Like this is a sandbox, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah very true. I think like you mentioned uh, earlier, uh, instead of, uh, workshop, it's play shop, because play shop. Yeah, I think play is the best way to learn. When you're playing, you learn much faster than when it's like 
drudgery. You're sitting there just listening to someone talk, and you get bored. Right. You're really paying attention because you know it's just someone talking. <laughs> yeah, it's much more fun to actually interact with the uh, with other people and learn in that way. So, yeah. when you were starting out, what kind of what style were you learning? Uh, what was your that's by the way why problem? that's by the way that's why when I travel I always have Piglet with me, and she's with Texadillo today. I don't know how what I don't know if the light's good enough for you guys to see, but maybe I'll shift it. But that's uh, Piglet and Texadillo. Oh, I'll move okay. the light, see if it's better for you guys or not. But uh, Piglet, uh, I find help. That's probably better actually for the um, Piglet. I find helps um, prevent outbreaks of seriousness which uh, seem to attend martial gatherings. So I take her with me wherever I go. And so far that's been prevented. Somebody will get on a microphone and start to uh, repeat somebody's CV and use the word master in this. Uh, and it's just like, cut them off. Just say, hey, hey, everybody, just call me Steve. Let's start teaching, you know, like, let's have fun. Um, so, um, I, I get what you're saying about that, that, you know, th that the fun, you know, it, it lubricates so much to be in that fun and exploring place. For me, as long as we have a clear sense of safety, then we can have fun, you know, and, and I'll shift my mode if something's not safe. Like, okay, just whatever else is going on, stop, look at your knee or, or, you know, put those knives down. Like, okay, let's, you know, let, let, let's clarify. Um, so, sorry, Andrew, you were starting to ask a question and then I grabbed Piglet, so. Oh, I, I just wanted to ask uh, a little bit about your history with Tai Chi and what kind of styles you studied and which ones you teach now. Uh, just the one. Um, so I do a, a Yang uh, family style. Um, which, you know, came to me as, you know, like a lot of people as if it's the original or a very old one and all the rest, but who knows, you know, I don't know that everybody's writing everything down. And if they were probably a bunch of them had, had it wrong, uh, <laughs> that's how it goes. Uh, for, for me, what made the most sense was, is this functional? Can I make sense of it in an application, in a physical way? And does it jibe with um uh the philosophy as i understand it you know so if there was a jump spinning sidekick double sidekick or something you know that might functionally work like hey look at we tested it it worked you know but it doesn't really fit with the philosophy so it, it would kind of have to be both things so if it fits the philosophy and it functionally fits um from an application point of view then it doesn't really matter to me what the scholars are arguing about or who really taught who and was this young Cheng Fu that studied with Hao and Fa Ke and I don't know. Like, I don't want to talk about that stuff. People yeah. want to talk about it. And I say, wouldn't it be cool if we were just doing our form right now or doing yeah. some push hands? <laughs> like, and, and I, I, maybe if my leg is broken and I'm laid up, like, sure, let's read that book and argue about the, but we can't know those answers. So they don't really serve me. Um, it, if I know that it's working, if it's functional, may, sure, prove it to me. Maybe somebody made up the form I do in 1922. Fine. It fits the philosophy. It's functional. It, it's allowed me to grow and thrive. It's fine. No, no problem. Um, so I, I've stuck to that same style. Of course, you know, in however long it's been now, like 35 years or something, I've, you know, dabbled in a whole bunch of different things and studied this form and done this workshop and seen this person every year and just done their form with them. And, um, but really I just have the one form. Um, I learned the Beijing 24, you know, the, the standard combined, uh, you know, the government by committee form. Yeah. But that, that just allows me to speak a language that millions of people speak. And, you yeah. know, like when I was in China, that led me to teach because I knew the form they were doing. So for me, it's like having a translator app on my phone. It's nice to have that form. I don't like it at all. I don't think it's great. I, 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 I never get excited about practicing it, but it allows me to speak a language, if you will. Um, so that's good. But that's not like my system or style. I just have my family style, uh, Tai Chi Chuan. 
uh, and related arts, that, you know, that go with that. But, you know, Tai Chi is who I am. All right. Good, good. Yeah, I asked my teacher, uh, I don't know, about a, two years ago now, uh, when are you going to teach me Tai Chi? <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, I am teaching you Tai Chi. I'm like, well, I'm learning the Chun style form, but I, I'm not really, really learning like fundamental Tai Chi. And I asked uh-huh. him, like, what is that? And he said, well, you learn it by studying the style. And so uh-huh. I wanted to ask you, what is uh, Tai Chi to you? What does that mean? You mean Tai Chi Chuan or do you mean Tai Chi? Yeah, yeah. what is Tai Chi Chuan, uh, the, the, the martial art of Tai Chi to you? So the, the way that I think of what a martial art is, is the closest readily familiar idea that we are we have access to in the west is a renaissance man which in this woke age is itself a problem because it wouldn't be renaissance man would it it would be renaissance person so what are you going to do so the phrase we're familiar with renaissance man points at a person who could do combat sure they could ride a horse they could speak to the king and they could speak to the serf. They could arrange flowers. They could write calligraphy. They were literate and they could write a letter or a poetry, right? In other words, a well-rounded person, right? One part of that, of course, is they could, you know, use a sword and a shield and ride a horse into battle or something, right? One small little part of the whole circle. So to me, uh, when asked, and I know you didn't ask this, what is a martial artist? That's what a martial artist is. It's a well-rounded being. Um, and uh, absolutely unsuccessfully so, right? Like, you know, you've been painted as if it's perfectly rounded, but as soon as I think of it, oh man, I really haven't put the time in on that in the last 10 years. And I just learned that this is a whole avenue of understanding, insight and growth, but but still the endeavor is to be well-rounded, right? And um, so, so what is Tai Chi Chuan? Tai Chi Chuan is a practice that seeks to be a well-rounded um, uh, natural man as we might read in Taoism or Zidan, um, in, um, who, who seeks to come into balance with whatever is interacted with, whether it's the sunlight or being kissed on the cheek or having an argument or having a pebble in your shoe or having a, you know, mosquitoes laying on you, whatever it happens to be. Mm-hmm. And so I think that Tai Chi Chuan is, is a practice for um, developing the breadth of the self at some depth with a particular, um, valuing of coming into balance. That isn't the same thing as seeing something that appears unbalanced, i.e. judgment, and then fixing it because the first chapter of the Bible says we're supposed to command the world. It's not that, right? It's not that that's unbalanced. I am the great balancer. Hear me roar. It's not that. It's how do my actions, which we would say is like, um, thoughts and actions and observations, like internally, all of my actions, how would they come into balance with what is? So ultimately, it's about receiving before offering. So so that means tingjin or listening, receiving with the eyes. It isn't just I think, I see, and I do. Like, in other words, fix it, change it, make it better. Because I have this brain and I have these hands and I have these tools. So let me go change the world right then i don't have provenance over the world i have provenance over here rickety as that provenance is right and the changes are in here how do i come into balance with this right Um, so tai chi chuan is a practice for that um which we largely see people moving through a prescribed choreography of techniques sure great that's part of it you know Uh, maybe even a large part right but 
how you're thinking the rest of the time, right? It's how you're breathing, how you're sitting. It's um, um, it's uh, your it's your Taoian practice. It's it's your push hands practice. It, it, it's an it's an awful lot more. Like push hands is um, a, a a practice at relationship, right? That's what I'm doing in push hands, which I ordinarily practice at a similar fractal level as myself. Like I am a unit, a being, a person. So are you. Great to have a partner. But I'm practicing to have relationship with other fractal versions of that. Like, for example, how do I relate to a government? How do I relate to this bum knee, which is just a small part of this whole being? Right. And so push hands is this practice at relationship and we we cannot help but be in relationship i'm in relationship with the chair that i'm on with you guys with the ear pod in my ear that's kind of annoying me by now at the end of a zoom day you know i'm in relationship all the time and sometimes it's for 14 seconds with a barista who i'll never see again and sometimes it's your intimate partner who you're with for your you know until you die and everything in between but it, we are necessarily going to be in relationship. This is the promise of the Tai Chi to the yin and yang symbol, right? We are necessarily going to be in relationship. Having understood that, the question I think then becomes, hey, have you practiced that thing that's definitely going to be happening? Right? <laughs> you know, if you live in Florida, you may not practice driving on ice. Like, that's probably reasonable. You don't really need to. But if you live in the Tao, right? Hey, dudes, this is going to happen. How about yeah. practicing it? And so for me, that's Tai Chi Chuan in this endeavor to fully develop the self, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I like how you started out with the old Budo idea where a warrior is the warrior. They have the warrior skills, but then they also have to practice all this other stuff, calligraphy flower arrangement yes in gardening because those things balance the warrior if you're always in your head about war and violence and you're always thinking that way when you just walk down the street anything that happens you're going to instantly uh react with the violence with a war like mentality where you need to be relaxed right. and calm and you know, here right yeah like if, if all you have is a hammer the whole world is a nail yeah exactly Right. And 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 um, that's that doesn't sound well rounded. You know, that'd be the guy you want on your side like in that so. one instance when you're about to get in a fight. Like, hey, my friend Barry, this, this dude is, amazing. you know, maybe you want that guy on your side in that moment. But mm -hmm. is that the life you want to lead is, you know, and as we were talking about teaching, like the life you lead is the life you're teaching through whether or not you call yourself a teacher. But people see you, right, your friends, your spouse, your coworkers, your children neighbors at the very least right so you're necessarily teaching yeah um and you mentioned uh that everyone you meet is a teacher yeah. now i you know I've, I've read that in the philosophy of taoism from many different scholars but uh what is what does that mean to you like are you just taking lessons from every encounter from every single event in your life and trying to draw a lesson from it or is it just yes. kind of natural? yeah well i should say that that was true until I met Dane, and now I have to rewrite it. But up till now, everybody has met has been a teacher. So uh, Dane has been the exception to the rule. Sorry, sir. <laughs> um, well, I, I don't, you know, necessarily have every encounter. Then take I don't even have the time to sit and say, okay, what was the actual discrete lesson there, right? But as we know, like you're going to teach her to do the Chen style. You said, I, I don't know if it's twice a week or whatever it happens to be. There are probably a number of classes where nothing new comes across. It's really just revisiting lessons, reminders, um, corrections of things that actually you've heard it before, but you need to hear it again. And then whatever... Uh, percent of the time there's actually a new thing where okay i haven't told you about this here's this new principle or the new move um so a lot of times the encounters with people or beings or things places or experiences they're that kind of teaching it's not a new thing it's just like all right right yes i yes okay 
I still need to consider that. And sometimes it reinforces something I really have integrated. And that's really nice. I had the, do we have time? Can I tell you a story? I don't know yeah, where we right. are in time. I don't, okay. We, uh, cool. Actually, we're, um, don't worry about that. Uh, we're coming up uh, in about 10 minutes, but I think uh, we. I also want to make sure to leave time to hear about um, how uh, how people can connect with you, learn from sure. you, etc. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, it's what what's the what's the deal with that? What's the best way for people to connect with you? Uh, best way I put a comment in the Facebook feed that we're on now is my Patreon. People can certainly find me on Facebook probably more readily than anything else. And I can put my email in there as a comment as well. It's farming our some days at Gmail. That's three words, no underscores or anything. Farming our, as in yours and my, some days, someday plural, because uh, I'm someday farm. Farming our some days at gmail.com. So that, that'll reach me directly. But most people find me on Facebook these days. Um, so to get at that um, question, um, I, I was at this push hands party, right? Which is like, like this <laughs> brilliant, like, just perfect. <laughs> They're not even pretending it's about Labor Day or stuff. It's just push hands party. This is great. So we're there. A bunch of us are pushing hands naturally. And it was all adults, right? Um, and this kid, I don't know who the kid was. If this somebody came to pick up their spouse and the kid came out, or I'm not really sure, but the kid was like, I don't know, seven or something like that. So he's kind of out in the yard on his own, but you know, he's seven, he's going to be fine. And he comes over, we're, we're all kind of laughing and moving around. Probably we looked epic, you know, super, I'm sure. Um, and we're pushing ends. And he comes over and he says to two people that are pushing, like, can you show me? Like, and he puts his hand out, you know, can you teach, you know, show me. And both of them are like, well, I'm not a teacher. Like, sorry, right? So he goes over to two other people and he says, hey, I want to, or however he says it, right? And they kind of ignore him. Like they're two adults having a good game or whatever. So the kid goes to, I think, I don't remember now, this is years ago, but like another group. And they basically ignore him or say, hey, you should get oh, away from here. It's adults playing. You don't want to have us fall on you. So then he goes over to uh, the guy who would become my teacher. His name is Teaching. His first name is Teaching. So like I'm in. So he goes over to him. And he goes, uh, can you teach me push, right? And Ti Ching looks at him. He's like this, you know, 80-year-old Chinese guy. And the kid, you know, so there's a massive difference. And he looks at him. He goes, no, no, I, I can't teach. And the kid, like, starts to frown, like, just like this is the same answer he's gotten. So then Ti Ching goes, after a beat, he goes, but you can show me. And then the kid who of course can't teach push hands, doesn't know push hands, but his saving grace is as a kid, he doesn't have to unlearn a whole bunch of stuff. He just says, okay. So he puts his hand out and, you know, teaching is there like, like this, right? And, he, and then so the kid goes, what you need to do is whatever and be careful of something and put your hand like this, you know, whatever. And then, so teaching smiling right and he says to the kid he asks him a question he's like should my shoulder be tight or soft and the kid goes soft feels good okay and they're going again and then he goes should, would it be safer if we went slower or is this okay and the kid's oh slower so he's just asking him questions which is him teaching mm -hmm. right but he's mm -hmm. just asking him a couple questions but then the kid who's not being spoken down to or corrected, he's just teaching, right? And I'm like crying, right? I'm like looking at like, this is, yes, this, yes, this is, this is uh, like so, exactly how it should be, right? Like I'm in ancient China right now watching a sage do the thing, right? And and the kid gets bored or whatever at some point, but, but he had his lesson that he gave, you know, and he wandered off. So that's, um, you know, kind of the end of that story, I guess. Um, yeah. Although I followed up with that teacher. Um, that kid was me. <laughs> yeah, that was right. And that kid was me, right. <laughs> um, 
And I, <laughs> I even forgot your question that led me there. Um, uh, yeah, I don't remember. We were talking about the uh, yeah, okay. uh, the Budo and stuff like that. I, I don't, I don't recall. Yeah, it is a beautiful <laughs> story, though. I, I, I totally love that story, and I, I, I love playing with kids because they learn fast and they tire slowly. Mm. And that's and great. There's, there's uh. Uh, kind of like you said, there's not all that, there's not so much stuff in the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and um, especially, especially if you just, if you, if you just show, show them, I mean, they get bored if you, if you try to, if you try to talk too much, but if you yeah, show right. them, then they're, they're usually you know, right and just right, do it right, with them. Right. Let, let them move. Yeah. Look for the least corrections that you might offer and and just support what's going on yeah it's yeah it's fantastic <laughs> the question it's almost like the socratic method of teaching in a way <laughs> that, mm -hmm. uh, guiding guiding to truth by asking uh yeah strategic illuminating students questions <laughs> yeah it, it absolutely was since, uh, since this COVID thing uh, i don't know if you heard about it but it's pretty big deal no what's that and how do you spell uh, it I was wondering <laughs> if, uh, since we're all stuck at home, we can't really go and push on each other. I was wondering if you have any recommendations for uh, great learning resources that other people can investigate. Mm. Um, I would say um, do a little bit of thinking, even contemplation. It might look like meditation from the outside. Do a little contemplation about something that you um, have an understanding of in your Tai Chi Chuan practice. So it's, it's this move, it's this principle, it's that um, that grip, that you know, whatever it might be. It's, it's maybe something small, like like I'm just thinking about one gin or something like that. So I'm kind of just bringing it to the fore, but I'm not trying to practice it. I'm not trying to have a new insight. I'm not trying to define it perfectly and know all there is to know about. I'm just bringing, uh, I, I'm, I'm taking it out of the fridge, opening the lid and getting a whiff of where I am with it. What is my, and like I'm bringing it to light in my mind in contemplation. So it's, it's resonant with me, it's resonant and it's um, awake and present. That could just be a minute or two, three minutes, just sat there, standing there, whatever. I'll do it in Zunswang. Uh, but just being there for a few, right, exactly. Just being there for a few moments. Okay, I know where I am with that. Then um, read a poem that is not mm -hmm. specifically teaching that. Something that is meaningful to you. And you will very likely see what it is you're contemplating or have it be illuminated differently one illuminates the other the the point of contemplation or the poem what poem illuminates the thing so for me particularly like the poem will be something about nature right i'm not going to read a poem about somebody in cleveland who you know drives a bus and the poem is about the layoffs like that's going to be harder for me to see you know where where lujian is um but if i'm reading a classic right like a like like a, a zen poem or Taoist poem or something like that and it's just about chrysanthemums and frogs and 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 cherry blossoms or something i'll probably see something new because i'm accessing a different part of my mind the the mind that we access these days right is a, a relatively isolated mind so like we're home right very little uh physical interaction going out to meet or push hands or go to class and then it's it's very sort of intellectual like i'm on zoom i'm in this mode um doing my class or my practice which is great that we can do that but can we access a different let's say um um os in our mind like a, a playful place or a poetic place or an artistic place or creative place, whatever the names might be that fit those. For me, poetry works. Can I access that 
and then see how, oh, wow, that really gives me a different insight into this practice that I do. Um, not because it's trying to, and I'm not trying to force it, but when I can shift into that different brain, I recognize a whole different avenue of resources, right? So if you've been stuck in your house during this lockdown, and you know, obviously you get cabin fever and like this, the house seems too small. If you opened a door and found that there's a new room in your house, you wouldn't feel quite as stuck in your house. All, you're still in your house, but you wouldn't feel quite as stuck. Whoa, that's a different room. That's a nice piece of furniture. Look at that window, right? There's room in here to, to do my yoga posture or something. And so just having that different window through the mind shifts an awful lot. Much like we were talking about with a kid. If you could play a kid and you don't normally, things have shifted. That That's a different... Uh, place to view the world from and interact with the world from. So doing with that with some purposefulness, I'm doing a series in which um, I'll just video uh, Zanswang, maybe 15, 25 minutes, something like that. But I'll set up a poem that I haven't read ahead of time. And I'll just read the poem while I practice. And I, you know, I teach it to the camera and I put it on my Patreon and stuff. And I, I'm not trying to, to discern what the poem is about or what they meant. I'm just saying that while I know I'm not trying to do that, what might this mean to me in this moment, given what I practice and think about, like you know, I'm doing meditation, I'm thinking about the naging to of the body and so forth and the conception vessel. And when he says something, wow, that's I'm going to take it to mean that for this practice. And so the series call is, Zan Swan fertilized by poetry, right? Mm. I'm not doing what my teacher taught me to do. And I'm certainly not getting a, a, a scholarly read on the poem, but I also probably stay here a little bit longer than I would without the poem. <laughs> you know, like, ah, oh, okay, we're, you know what, that's fine, right? Mm. So kind of accessing the resource, not being extrinsic to the self, because your question was about resource accessing, not seeking to access a new in extrinsic resource, but accessing a varied lens by which you may see the oh, ordinary right. um, resources. All right, all right. No, I, that's a that's the very unique answer. Very, most people would just say, "Oh yeah, there's this really good book." <laughs> <Let me. laughs> all right, there's a good book. I forgot it's to really plug good. my book. <laughs> 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 Go to dandormio.com for all of your needs. Yeah, dandormio.com. Yeah, he has a book up there. Let me do the next manual. <laughs> well, well, I know cool. we could go on uh, for a while, but uh, in order, in the interest of keeping this bite size, how about if we say to be continued and. Uh, He's um, easy enough to do more anytime. Happy to chat with you guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's really good to know. I know there's a lot of stuff we could we could dig into. Um, I really I really uh, dig and resonate with your philosophy and approach to teaching. I um, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you're you're doing what you're doing and that we're on the same team helping people to yeah. establish um, and uh, establish their own personal daily mind body energetic hygiene practice because that's the world that I want to live in where more people are doing this stuff. So, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, uh, for, um, so people can uh, reach out to your website, your email, um, if they want to know more about you, if they'd like to learn from you, uh, come visit the farm in, uh, it's, it's New Jersey, right? Or Connecticut. In got, Connecticut, yeah. Oh. Yes. Uh, yeah, come back to the farm in Connecticut and, uh, you know, uh, play with the animals and um, and uh, and teach Stephen some Tai Chi. Yes, that's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> um, Finally. And, uh, this is like a dating site where I find my teacher. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Right, can I swipe left on Andrew? 
<laughs> you're welcome <laughs> so um uh and thank you also for being here thank you everyone uh who's tuning in i uh i see there's lots of great comments uh already from the the live viewers so we appreciate that and uh also thanks for watching this if you're uh if you're watching and listening to this later we appreciate you being here and Thank you for joining us on this lifelong mind body mastery journey. So keep up the good work, Stephen, and we'll look forward to seeing you and talking some more. Thank you very much. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Have a good night. Everyone.